Welcome back to the studio. In today's video, I'd like to share an update with you about some of what I've been working on over the course of the last few months, and also take this opportunity to share one of my favorite techniques for creating larger scale, complicated paintings without getting lost in the details. If you've been following this channel for a while, I mean, first of all, thank you. Uh, but secondly, you've probably noticed that I've been completely silent on YouTube and pretty quiet across social media for quite some time now. Um, I have some serious health issues that I've been dealing with. Um, and as much as that really sucks, it has oddly brought some clarity to what I really want to focus on in developing my career going forward. So in particular, with limited energy, I really want to focus on projects and paintings that are very meaningful to me, such as this one. On screen, you can see some of the process of me working on uh, my first very large painting for my On the Skin of Giants project. To find out more about some of the inspiration behind this project, as well as the first steps of this painting, you can go to my last video linked above, um, where I collect the specimen that I'm working from. Now, just a fair warning that in that video, I had initially completely misidentified the um, specimen I'm working from. This is actually a Japanese silk lilac branch, but this is the same painting that I've been picking away at. I have worked on a few other paintings for this same project, um, so this isn't the only thing I've done. However, my progress has been slower than I had hoped, again, due to health issues. I'm looking for ways to hire an assistant um, and hopefully that'll free up some more of my time to work on my paintings as well as to create videos like this one. Because progress has been slow and spotty, um, this has made it all the more important for me to be able to come back to this painting and where I left off without getting lost in my painting and ending up with distortions or clashing areas where I've changed my methods and so things don't match. It's really important when working on a huge piece like this and picking up and dropping it that it all works together in the end. So my strategy that I've developed for working on a big piece like this and not getting lost in the details is to approach it in a sort of puzzle solving way and work it out, breaking down the puzzle problem. Um, so that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Lee. I'm a botanical and natural science illustrator based in Kitchener, Waterloo, Canada. On this channel, I share watercolor techniques and tips and some insights into my daily life as an illustrator. If this is content that you're interested in, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. As I mentioned, in this video, I'm discussing my strategy for breaking down a large painting and making sure I get a good result when I'm working on a really large painting that spans days, weeks, or months and that is to treat it like a puzzle. To help you understand what I mean by a puzzle solving approach, I want you to think about how you might solve a jigsaw puzzle. Nothing fancy or anything, just your bog standard comes in a box, 500 piece jigsaw puzzle. In the case of a jigsaw puzzle, your reference is probably the image that's printed on the front of the box. So right off the bat, you're gonna look for anything that stands out in that image, any spot that's a very different color from the rest, um, you know, eyes, uh, things that, that really stand out. Sometimes you can pick up a few pieces from the middle of the jigsaw puzzle just right off the bat because they stand out so much. And then the other thing that you're going to look for is the edge pieces because it's way easier to match edge pieces along since they have a flat side. Um, so you're going to pick out all those edge pieces, you're going to sort them by colors, and you're going to build out the outside of the jigsaw puzzle. So my approach starting out a piece is pretty much exactly the same thing. So the first thing that I'm going to do is decide where the edges of my reference are and match those up to um, where I'm going to end them on my painting. In this case, I had a real choice because I was painting at a set size, um, at life size, so site size, exactly the same size uh, for my reference and for my painting, 
but my reference was a lot larger. So I, you can see that I've tied some pieces of yarn to my reference um, to show me where the edges of my paper are going to go to line that up. And then I'm going to mark those edges onto my paper. Because this is a painting and I get to choose my composition a little, I am changing what my reference is, which pieces I'm using. So I have rearranged it a little bit, um, but I have that all marked so that I know what's going on. And then this is the only time that I'm going to use a pencil is I then go into my paper and I mark the basic outline of where my subject is that I'm working on. I don't worry about little fiddly details at this point. I just want to have the basic outline for where I will later fill in those details. So very quickly, I jump right in with ink. Um, I, I'm not going to draw this all out in pencil and then ink over it. I feel like that um, loses some of the a natural living quality of the work. It makes it look stiffer because I've been running over the line so many times. I also find that this causes less wear on the paper. So I know that it's a little bit scary to jump in with ink, but what I do now that I've got the basic points where my reference is going to be is I start figuring out the areas that jump out the most at me and I don't have to be completely perfect about them, but I start drawing in the bits that I'm going to notice. If I leave this painting and come back to it and I look at my reference, I'll be able to recognize where the brightest spots of color are or where there's a really characteristic split in my branches or um, a shape that's really obvious and different from those around it. So I'm going to start filling those in and based on the relative positions of the edges and the most prominent characteristics, I can start filling in the outline of my painting. I always start with ink and then go to watercolor, but with a smaller painting, I might actually work in ink and watercolor simultaneously, where I'll ink in a section of the piece before drawing out the whole piece and start inking that and work outwards, always just slightly ahead with the ink. With a large piece like this one, I chose to do the inking of my foreground branch almost entirely before watercolor and then only reinforcing some of the lines and in ink afterwards. Um, this is so that all of it looks cohesive. I was concerned that with such a large piece, I would my technique would evolve as I went and I didn't want to do one section and then two months later be inking another section and my way of working had changed a little and it might be obvious so I wanted to work in more cohesive stages. You'll also see that as I'm working I'm jumping around the piece and that serves several functions. So the first function of that is, again, because this is such a large piece, I don't want there to be a change as I develop my techniques where one portion of the piece looks very different from another because I've evolved how I work. So I do want to have some coverage where it's all sort of tied together. And if I change how I work, that'll be reflected in the whole piece. The other reason for this is that ink has a little bit of drying time and I don't want to rub my hand back over it. Likewise with watercolor. Finally, this is back to that um, puzzle solving approach where I'm always looking for what jumps out most at me. So that might be in a different section of the piece where I've already gotten to a point in one section where I'm really just d getting down into the details, but another section has something that's really jumping out at me at this point, like, oh, that's missing something. So I'll jump around the piece quite a bit. I find this also keeps my interest because I'm always doing something a little bit different. I'm not just always staring at the same spot. I've found that this puzzle solving approach really helps me create arbitrarily large pieces. 
uh, without losing interest or having things look out of place. I'm now working on the background of this image, so I will be painting other branches for this tree um, just without the ink, and I'm following a very similar technique. I'm curious to hear from all of you what your techniques are for keeping your interest on a longer or more complicated piece and how you keep it all cohesive. Do you also follow this sort of puzzle solving approach or do you have other techniques that you've found? Let me know down in the comments below. If you found this content interesting or useful, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. I am hoping to post some more video content very, very soon. Um, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you'll be notified when my next video comes out. I also have a Patreon creator page where I sh share some backstage information and do some extra videos. A uh, link for that is also in the description below. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.